This is the ideal system in my mind, the pyramid of health we have. We have the hospital at the top. With, with Cure, you have the clinic where you do immunizations and referrals and some treatment kind of, uh, kind of in between. And then down at the bottom, you have community uh, health or prevention. We have focused at the top of this uh, on hospitals and clinics, not only in the medical profession now, as noted earlier, there's only three public health people here, right? But, but in, in missions, we focus on the hospital and the clinic. And what's been missing in all of that is the foundation of community health, where people take responsibility for their own health and they learn how to uh, prevent disease and, and, and live healthier lives. They take responsibility for their, for their own health. When you get down into the community, all kinds of things come into play. The church, the family. Uh, if, if we're gonna have a healthy community, we can't have trafficking, we can't have domestic violence, we can't have, so we begin to deal with, with family and with mental health, with wellness, with agriculture, with education, with enterprise. Here's another interesting fact. What is more expensive, a volunteer program in the community or the hospital? What is harder to maintain and sustain over time with funds from the outside? And for some reason, we've kind of been blind to the importance of community health in the integrated structure of our health systems. And we focused up at the top on cure, and we're not doing the work that we need to do down in the area of prevention. And we've, we've heard that hospitals that were started 50 years ago are struggling to be maintained, uh, and that we're seeing fewer and fewer missionaries going long term. Uh, all of that says to me, we need to integrate community health into our hospital and clinic systems. We need to be working together on an integrated system that delivers health care to communities and especially to the most marginalized. I want to talk about some ideas in community health that need to change in order for us to really be effective. The first is that we need to focus on empowering people to manage their own health. Rather than delivering solutions to them, we need to we need to come and walk among them. And what we do in our training is instead of presenting solutions, we pose problems. We do a role play that illustrates a child dying from diarrhea. And then we have them talk about what causes that? Why is that happening? Is it happening in our area? What can we do about it? Then we lay out a framework of truth, World Health Organization standards and other things that teach about diarrhea, and we ask them to create their own solutions. When they create their own solutions, it is locally owned, they can pass it on to their neighbor, they can pa pass it on to the next person. It's not radio broadcasts and it's not posters, and it's not doctors coming in and, s and saying this is what you need to do. It's helping people think through the process themselves. And that's, uh, th that requires a different pedagogy. It requires that we work with people in a different way than we've been taught to work with them as doctors and medical professionals, and even in the public health uh, classrooms. We're not, being, we're not being taught this process of adult learning. Outcomes are measured by behavior change. It's not enough for us as a church, a short-term team, a government agency, to go into a village and put in a well and say we've done our job. Because the question is not, is the well there? The question is, are they using it? And there are a lot of reasons why we go around the world and we find wells that have been put in that people aren't using. Because it's been put two miles from their home and they've been getting water across the street for generations. They don't understand germ theory. There's a whole lot of things going on in their lives that make that well useless unless they understand why they need it. Whoops, wow, that was, I was being emphatic on that point, right? <laughs> unless, unless they understand uh, why they need it and they create the solution and own it themselves, then they're gonna sustain the well. 
And you're not going to find the situation that I find everywhere I go. I went into, uh, into Liberia with Samaritan's Purse, talked to their wash people. They said, we're putting in all these wells. Nobody's using them. I go into Laos, and there's a well with a hand, hand pump. The hand pump is broken. It took our team five minutes without tools to fix the pump, so we sat down with the people and we said, why haven't you fixed it? They said, it's not our well. So we have to understand that the community has to not only be engaged, they have to own the processes that lead to change in their own lives. And so community health needs, from my perspective, to be rethought because that's not exactly what we're, we're teaching. And here's another one. I worked on a PhD at Oxford. My daughter was injured and I had to drop out. That's a long story. But my, my thesis was gonna be on volunteerism. That, that community health programs that are effective in creating and sustaining change are driven by volunteers, not by paid people. We're not paying people to do a job we're helping people to see how they can change their life and make life better for their neighbors. And if they own it, they're gonna spend the time to make it happen. Does that make sense? And so that's a paradigm shift. There are more paradigm shifts that we're gonna talk about in the area of community health. I've put the cross up here though, because I believe if we're talking about the village, you cannot separate the gospel from their health and their development. And here's why. Everywhere you go around the world in village settings, and I've said this in 50 countries, nobody who, ha who knows the village has ever contradicted me. If you want to contradict me, come and talk to me about it. But this is the situation in the village. In the village, the major religion, whether it's Christianity in Sub-Saharan Africa, or it's Hinduism in Asia, or it's it's Buddhism in Southeast Asia, or it's, it, it, you name it. In the village, the major religion is often a veneer over animism. And what they believe in the village is that the assets that control the destiny of their life belong to the spirits. So if you want good health, there's a certain spirit that you go to, or there are witch doctors and shamans and people like that who take care of that for you. Right? And what's missing in all of that is this. They are not victims of, uh, of circumstance. They are not people uh, who have been placed uh, in a situation to be controlled by others. They are people who have been made in the image of God. And the first thing God said to them was, take dominion. The resources in the community were given to them so that they could use it to make life better for themselves and for others. The gospel begins with, we are made in the image of God and we are stewards of resources. The cross changed everything because Jesus, by his death on the cross, not only took away our sins, Colossians, but he disarmed the principalities and powers. The victory belongs to Jesus. 